If you've always wanted to be an Oscar-winning screenwriter, meet one. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Wordsmith on Oak Street in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the 13th annual South Carolina Writers Workshop Writing Conference, which was held at Ocean Creek Resort last month. And we're visiting with Mary Eady, the president of the Wordsmith. Mary, thanks so much for having us in today. Greg, thanks for being here to talk about all these great writers who are coming and going from South Carolina. I know. Well, all week, of course, we'll wrap up on Thanksgiving, but to thank all week to be able to highlight some of the amazing writers that were in for last month's conference. It's incredible. It is incredible, and everybody learned so much and became so enthusiastic and renewed and ready to go out and write. And we would love for South Carolina to become... Uh, the place, the, the headquarters for making more movies throughout the United States, for uh, concepts in play production, for aspiring novelists to come to retreat and to enjoy the, the ocean areas and the PD of South Carolina. There's so many great stories on the back roads of our state. Yes, that there are. Mary, we're sitting in the Wordsmith today. Share with the viewers a little about your public relations firm, the Wordsmith, and your role as a public relations counselor. Wordsmith started in 1989. I actually started on April Fool's Day. That's oh, a yeah. great day to start a new business. <laughs> and we deal primarily in public issues, in transportation, education, environmental, and health care. But we also do special, special areas such as forest products because that's a big area in, in our economy here. And we work with a, with a number of other issues as well. So it's a lot of fun. We enjoy it. We select our clients carefully, and we hope they select us carefully. But we do a lot of writing and a lot of community relations work. Yes, Mary. And, of course, few know Mary Eady uh, has joined the literary ranks and obviously has made a big step working your way through uh, the publishing process. What kind of book have you written, Mary, and, and when will it be available? Well, the book I've written, the working title may be changed by the publisher, but the working title is Conflicts of Interest. Mm. And it's a romantic political suspense book based upon small town politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a kidnapping and a murder and sex scenes. Ooh. The publisher keeps sending it back, write more of this, make it more exciting. And so uh, an agent has that in New York now and is, and is placing it and has, a, has interest among four or five publishers. So it'll be a while, even even now before it's out. Yeah, so we don't know exactly when it will be available, but it will be available. Well, I will certainly get back with you and let you know yes. that so you can let the viewers know. Please do, Mary. Absolutely. When did you join the South Carolina Writers Workshop, and have you held membership in other literary groups? The South Carolina Writers Workshop is a wonderful group. I've been a member for about two years. I'm also a member of Mystery Writers of America, mm -hmm. and both of those groups have helped me to develop uh, an interest in writing fiction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do these organizations help an aspiring writer? They put you with other writers who've been successful so that you can develop your skill, you can learn to develop characters, plots, you can work with agents, you meet editors from various publishing houses, and you learn what's going on inside the business. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have a concept for a story and another entirely to know what to do with that concept to make it become a reality. Yes, absolutely. Well, surely this week we're so fortunate to be able to be here at the Wordsmith and to visit with some of the amazing folks who were in at last month's conference. Share with us a little bit, Mary, about uh, today's special guest, Pamela Wallace. What's been her area of expertise and really her accomplishments that may be most familiar to most of us? Pam Wallace began her career as a journalist, and then she went into writing romantic novels. and. Uh, from there, she started writing movies. She and her husband co-wrote Witness, which was an Oscar-winning screenplay. Mm -hmm. And she uh, stayed in that industry and writes uh, screenplays for movies today. Mm -hmm. She's very, very successful. She worked with Harrison Ford. She's worked with a lot of big stars in the business. And I can't wait to hear what she has to say about those experiences. Nor can we, and that's exactly what we'll be listening to next. Stay tuned to Pamela Wallace, coming up next on Carolina People. Music 
Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Wordsmith on Oak Street in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the 13th annual South Carolina Writers Workshop Writing Conference, which was held at Ocean Creek Resort last month. And we're visiting with Pamela Wallace, an author of more than 25 novels and a screenwriter who co-wrote the movie Witness. Yes. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us this morning and, and getting out of here last month for an amazing conference. Well, it's a beautiful area and a total pleasure to be here. Had you ever visited South Carolina before? I've been to Charleston and Hilton Head, but I had not been to this area. To the Grand Strand. It's a very yeah, popular... Oh, that that's exactly right. The Grand Strand is about a 60-mile stretch from the North Carolina line to a little mm. south of, uh, of, of Myrtle Beach, a place called Pauly's Island. Well, I was told it was one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, and it is. Well, with 13-plus million folks coming here year after year, it, it must be a, it is a very special place. It sure is. Thank you so much for coming out. What, when you think of oh, your years in writing, was there any particular person or event that inspired you to become a writer? Well, I think like most writers, I grew up wanting to be a writer, you know, mm. from an early age. Um, you know, I loved books. They meant the world to me. I admired writers, and I knew that when I grew up, I wanted to write stories that would touch people as much as those writers had touched me and impacted my life. And I grew up in a very small town, and the books I read broadened my horizons and made me realize that there was a great deal more out there than I was experiencing in my small little world mm -hmm. and inspired me to, you know, kind of go for it. And these were nonfiction pieces that you were reading that... Uh... Uh, no, it was novels. Uh -huh. You know, the classic um, Daphne du Maurier, you know, Rebecca, those, those kinds of things. Uh -huh. How exciting. How does someone begin a career as a screenwriter? Well, in my case, I married into it, <laughs> which was the easy way. Uh, my ex-husband was a screenwriter, mm -hmm. and uh, I had written several novels, and I did a proposal for a novel, and my publisher, in their infinite wisdom, turned it down. Mm. And my husband said, you know, this would make a great movie. And so we did the script, and it was called Witness. Mm -hmm. And after it became so successful, I thought, well, you know, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can write screenplays. Mm. And so I started doing it and went on from there and mm. eventually was writing on my own. And now I'm producing as well as writing. Yes, that's right. I think I saw that, uh, was there a CBS Christmas movie, Borrowed Hearts? Borrowed Hearts was done a few years ago with Roma Downey. Uh-huh. Um, and Eric McCormick of Will and Grace. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful family Christmas movie. Did very well. It was number one in the ratings. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This year I had a movie on the Hallmark Channel, the Hallmark right. Cable Channel, yeah. called Straight from the Heart. Oh, yeah. I tend to do well with heart in, in the title. Yes. Uh, and that did very well. The Hallmark Channels had some great, I think it was formerly Odyssey, and then yes. became the Hallmark Channel. Yes. And an old family friend, Lana Corby, had headed up the yes. Hallmark Channel for a yeah. good while, following Margaret Lush. It's an amazing group out there. What? So the first step, obviously, in, in your instance, was marrying into it, but the real big, the first step was misery. Um, witness, excuse me. <laughs> was witness, forgive me. I. Someone there is been, a lot of misery in being that, a screenwriter, that's, that's, that's golly, true. Forget, I thought I would drop that, yes. <laughs> Witness, I mean, to, to think to step out with such a superstar. Well, you don't plan on that. You know, it was, we thought a nice little movie. In fact, I remember a friend asking me about it before it came out and saying, well, do you think I'll like it? And I said, well, you know, it's a nice little movie. I, I think you'll think it's okay. Nobody expected oh, anything yeah. that yeah. happened yes. with it. You just yeah. can't plan that. Would, now, when folks st step back and they say Pamela Wallace, thriving writer, producer, Hollywood, I mean, they, they talk big things. Now, of course, you're, you're not living in Hollywood. You're not there on a day-to-day -day basis. You can be a superstar and not have to live in the, in the heat of it all. Oh, I, just about anybody who can leave L.A. does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most mm -hmm. people really prefer not to have to live there. It's tough when you're in the business, and when you live in L.A., you're surrounded by it. 24-7. You know, mm -hmm. it's all anybody talks about. That's all that seems to matter. And it's much nicer to have a life that 
doesn't revolve around that, especially when you have a family. Yes. You know? And Pamela, you now live very close to where you grew up. Yes, I do. I went back home to where my roots were, where my family is, and unfortunately I have to commute to L.A. a lot uh, yeah. because they don't come to me, you know. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a, actually a great life. Mm. What was it like to work with Harrison Ford, Pamela? I wouldn't know because I never met him. Oh, wow. Golly. <laughs> Big disappointment. They shot the movie on location in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. And I was in California, and I had a small son, and I was on under contract to do two different novels at the mm. same time. And I was a delegate to the Democratic Convention. Oh, wow. This was all happening during the same six-week period. And I remember saying to my husband, well, should I go to the set to visit it? Because I wanted to meet him. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he said, well, if the only reason you want to go is to meet him, don't bother because he'll be at the premiere. You can meet him then. Well, as it turned out, he was shooting a movie and didn't go to the premiere. So I never had a chance to meet him. Oh, Big disappointment. And not even, not even now. You still haven't met him. We no, need to work still, on that. Though. I know, I wow. know. And it's really neat because uh, in several different interviews that Ford has given, he has said that Witness was actually his favorite film. Is that right? Yeah. How exciting! Yeah. How exciting for you! I'm sure that must be a wonderful, a wonderful. He makes film. you proud. Yeah, of course. He is a superstar. Can you give us a glimpse into your day when you think about uh, the development of a movie? What, what goes into those aspects? And oh, it's so much more complicated than people might realize. You know, you, as a as a writer producer, you come up with an idea. Um, in my case, it's always an idea that I really love passionately. That's really from my heart, and I either go ahead and write the screenplay or I go out and do what they call pitch it. You know, I'll pitch the idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm lucky, somebody will pay me to write the screenplay. Mm -hmm. If they don't, if I love the idea enough, I'll just go ahead and write it. What's called on spec, on mm -hmm. speculation. Mm -hmm. Witness was a script written on speculation. Mm -hmm. And that means nobody's paying you to do it. You don't know if it'll ever sell. Mm -hmm. uh, Witness took three years to sell. And during that three years, it was rejected by everybody in Hollywood, mm -hmm. um, which goes to show that nobody knows anything, right. <laughs> as yeah. they say. Um, and um, then it, once you finish the script, um, that's when the real complications begin because you then you have to try to sell it to a studio, you have to try to get a big actor attached. Right. Uh, most movies don't get made unless a major actor is attached. Mm -hmm. um, you want to, You have to get a director. That's also complicated and time-consuming and difficult. Then there's the rewrites. Everybody, you know, the studio or the network, the star, the director, the producers, everybody has what they call notes. Mm -hmm. So you rewrite over and over and over again. And during that process, you try not to ruin the story because sometimes the notes are not real great. Mm. Uh, my favorite story about the rewrite process didn't yeah. actually happen to me. It happened to another writer who had written a movie about a young woman who gets pregnant. And the, the studio bought the story. They brought her in for the first notes session. And they said, we love it. We want to do it. But we have this thought, does it have to be a woman? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and she said, well, you know, if you want to keep the pregnancy, it kind of does. Yeah, yeah. Golly. <laughs> So that gives you a sense of what the whole notes oh, process crazy. is like. Then if you're lucky, it goes into production. And unfortunately, the vast majority of projects never get produced. Which is why it's great being a novelist, because when I write a novel, it gets published. Yeah, absolutely. That's but right. about half to almost three-fourths of the scripts I've written have not been produced yet. And do you think uh, half to three fourths of the three fourths of those are potentially a witness? I mean, or, or just uh, um, have the same? Uh, obviously, you said the passion, the same level of uh, heart intensity for you is put into each of those. I don't think you can tell if they uh -huh. have that kind of potential or not. Uh -huh. um, there's a project I'm doing right now that I certainly think has the potential to be a wonderful very meaningful movie mm -hmm. but there's simply no way of ever predicting how an audience is going to react how critics are going to react is it when you win an oscar it truly is 
capturing lightning in a bottle. I'm sure. And that just doesn't happen very often. Yeah, and what is that like for, for your <laughs> peers to re recognize you as a superstar? I mean, a, a, actually winning an Oscar. God, mm. I mean, that just causes so many folks to sit back. Of course, everyone's seen uh, Academy Awards on TV mm -hmm. and fought through that aspect. But uh, being Well, it's not something you grow up right? planning on doing, mm -hmm. and there's no way to be prepared for it. And... You know, as a woman, of course, you agonize over the dress. What are you going to oh, wear? God. That is what matters. Uh, and your hair, you know, <laughs> are you having a good hair day? Um, and so for me, it was just, you know, the, going through the whole dress and hair and all of that thing. And that's the opposite of what you go through as a writer because you're home in your sweats. Yeah, you know, sure, writing. sure. Uh, and I was so convinced we weren't going to win that I didn't write an acceptance speech or anything. Oh. Man. So I was totally stunned and terrified when they called our names and to have to go up on stage in front of thousands of people in the auditorium and hundreds of millions of people yeah, worldwide of watching oh yeah and you're there and it is so terrifying right and then you leave the stage and you're holding this incredibly heavy statue, and it is heavy. Is it? Yeah. And you walk backstage, and there's a gauntlet of reporters who oh, are yeah. shouting questions right. at you, and you're just dazed, yeah. you know? You don't know what you're saying. Um, it, it's it, it's, um, it's a mind-boggling experience. I can't. Uh, this is worthy <laughs> of stopping the interview. Yeah, I mean, I can't even think of anything uh, more mind-boggling than that. Golly, it's like the... The receiving uh, touchdown in a Super Bowl with that many folks, except those folks are wearing helmets, <laughs> and you could have had a bad hair day. I mean, uh, it could have yeah, been anything. Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's almost something that you don't really want to go through again. Right. You know, people will actually say to me, "Well, wouldn't you? You know, maybe you'll win another Oscar." Yeah. Like that happens more than once. <laughs> and I go, you know, I just frankly would just as soon not not go through that. Oh well. Golly, Pamela. When you're co-writing or co-producing, how do you process and organize your work? Uh, the collaborative process, film is a collaborative medium. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're a writer who writes alone, it's a collaborative medium. As I just said with the whole notes process, mm -hmm. um, everybody puts their stamp on a project. Mm -hmm. And by the time a movie is done, if you're lucky, you've had all these talented people who have made their contributions and made it so much better than maybe what you originally envisioned. Like, my favorite scene in Witness is the dance scene in the barn, and we didn't write that. Mm. On the set, Harrison Ford came up with that idea. Wow. It's the best scene in the movie. I love it. I didn't write it. Mm. You know, uh, there were many, many things that the, the director, Peter Weir, contributed that we didn't think about. Every project I've ever done, other people have brought things to it that I didn't envision, and for the most part, that made it so much better. Mm -hmm. That's what you hope for. Unfortunately, you sometimes have experiences where they make it worse. Mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. one project that I told my friends and family not to watch. Oh, no. Uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. Um, but you have to be collaborative if you're going to be in the film business. Mm -hmm. If you can't really be that way, if you feel like, well, it's my story right. and I want to do it my way, then you should be writing a novel. Mm -hmm. And so on that own spec site, mm -hmm. uh, on that side, in the three years of being turned down left and right, mm -hmm. you don't know, had you had that, for instance, the dancing in there, it would be possible that someone would adjust, I mean, small things that... Uh, could you push someone know. over. You just have no idea. And of course yeah. those things come uh, even later along in the process. This is such a processional aspect. That's so difficult for so many folks to to think of, I'm sure. Well, there's so the business side of it. You know, when you're a writer or an aspiring writer, mm -hmm. you are totally focused on that, yeah. and that's hard enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's tough enough to try to write a good story. Right. And what a lot of people don't realize is that's just where it begins. Wow. The business side of it is as important as the creative side of it. And it's been one of the, the most important and toughest lessons I've, I've had to learn. Pamela, for most TV shows, the, the writing's done on teams. Is, is that correct? Yes, mm -hmm. yes it is. Mm -hmm. What has been the single most challenging writing project you've ever had? I, I wrote a project for Lifetime, a movie, mm -hmm about childhood sexual abuse. 
this is obviously an incredibly important and painful and complex subject. And it was both emotionally challenging to write it, the hardest writing I've ever had to do. Mm -hmm. And um, as a screenwriter, you know, wanting to get things made, very, very challenging. And so far it has not been produced. Mm. Wow. Well, I, and anything could happen. Is anything that, is that spread happen. out in the community? I mean, how do you... Isn't that scary at some level? For instance, those three years when Witness was out... Are that was you, nothing. That was short. That, that was, was short. Average movie that actually gets produced right. takes several years, and it's very common to be 10 or 12 years. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very long, time-consuming process. Every movie I've gotten produced took several years. I don't know how folks can actually live there in L.A., in greater L.A., and knowing the, I mean, how, to, how difficult that is to, to just the waiting aspect. Well, that's why you have to move on to other projects. Right. You, know, right. you don't just write a movie, you know, write a script, and then sit there and wait for mm -hmm. that project mm -hmm. to get made because you would go crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. You I'm sure. go from one project, immediately go into the next project. Great. We've got about four minutes, panel. If a high school student with dreams of writing movies is watching us right now, what advice do you think you'd give that student about the right experience and knowledge base to develop for that career? Well, first of all, I would tell them that anybody can do it. You know, if I can do it, coming from where I came from, where a small town, no connections, knew nothing about the industry, uh, or publishing for that matter, um, anybody can do it and especially nowadays Hollywood is so much more inclusive a place no matter what ethnic group you know what your cultural background um, anybody is now welcome and can succeed because film is so global now mm -hmm. it's not just about mm -hmm. this country making movies for this country it's right. making movies for the world mm -hmm. for the world audience mm -hmm. and I would say just write you become a writer by writing and it's great to read books on writing I highly recommend that I recommend taking classes in writing going to writing conferences especially screenwriting conferences if you want to be a screenwriter at screenwriting conferences you you interact with people who are in the business you make those important connections but the bottom line is to write if you want to write books you just keep writing book after book and if you want to write screenplays you just keep writing screenplay after screenplay. The average screenwriter writes at least four scripts. Four? At least four before they sell one. One writer wrote 13, mm. and it was the 13th that finally sold. Golly, Pamela. Patience seems like a key word here. Yeah, not my middle name, right, but right. you have to develop patience. Mm, yeah, and golly. you just have to persist. That's wonderful. Persistence, patience, some big words here, and passionate. Mm -hmm. If an adult who enjoys writing as a hobby wants to begin writing a screenplay, what's the best preparation? How should they begin? Read some books on it. Mm -hmm. Take some courses. Most colleges, even you know, community colleges, offer courses. Uh, and also read scripts. Don't just watch movies, but buy screenplays and read them and analyze them. You know, because it's not exactly a formula, but it is a form. Mm -hmm. that, that movies follow, that screenplays follow, and you need to learn that form. Mm -hmm. Pamela, if there was an inspiration in particular, if anyone in particular has inspired you to keep doing what you're doing, would there be anyone or...? Uh... There were several. I was very lucky in my life that I had many people who were supportive. Uh, in, in high school there were a couple of teachers, English teachers, who thought I had writing talent, and they ar arranged for me to get a college scholarship. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to go to college without it. Those people believed in me. I'm a big fan of teachers. Yes. Uh, they truly changed the lives of, of some of their students. Mm -hmm. And then the writers I read who, uh, Mark Twain, for instance, one of my all-time favorite books was Huckleberry Finn. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just the things that are expressed in books that touch you so profoundly and inspire you to want to rise to that level and to, to put that out into the universe. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Pamela, one of your books, You Can Write a Movie, yeah. tells what agents, producers, and actors sometimes are looking for in, in a good yeah. screenplay. Would you summarize that? we got we got a, about 45 seconds. Well, in. I can summarize it quickly in two words. 
concept and castability, the concept of the story, what the basic idea is, and is there a big role for a star? Is there a role that a star is going to want to play? You know, a role that gives him something to show how well he can act. Those two things are the two things that determine most of the time whether a script sells or doesn't sell. And the concept is all about, is it a story that will appeal to a broad audience? Like Jurassic Park, dinosaurs coming to life. Mm -hmm. Inspired by some amazing high school English teachers. Castability, golly, there's so many great words here. Passion, persistence, patience, whether it's her middle name or not. And of course the great words, those four words, Anybody can do it, whether you're a high school student or a senior, male or female, take that time. Take that time just to just to stick it out. Pamela Wallace, thanks so much for being with us this Pleasure. morning. Thank you. Stay tuned to more Carolina people coming up next. I want to thank Mary Eady of the Wordsmith and Pamela Wallace, one of the amazing folks visiting at the South Carolina Writers Conference last month, for making today's Carolina people so special.